Welcome back to the Four Rings Inn for another Woo! episode of City of Shadow. Last we left our highborns in our homebrew world of Ethereum. They are in the city of Thalia of the small kingdom of Kalidor after investigating a horrific murder in Quillen Keep, the home of our very own uh, Count Heir Eleanor Quillen. Uh, the murder investigation went as well as it could and was covered up very nicely as the pieces of a cult uh, that connected it with cultists that may be lurking throughout the city were removed. Uh, the Our resident Ashen Order cloak, Oriana Lunaris, has promise to come back the next day with some reinforcements, some discreet reinforcements, in order to investigate and help make, ensure the Quillen safety. Speaking of safety, our favorite Viscount, Renshaw Tirval, had returned to his manor that night, found within the belongings of his grandsire some old books, old journals, uh, some with strange writing of runes and more mad ravings of symbols and gibberish as long as well as finding an incredibly rare artifact a glowing purple and onyx sphere and as he's looking at this a glob of spit lands on his sphere only to see a beast from the ceiling leap down for it. Oh, so I ask all of you now, are you ready for a scary story? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Renshore, you are there on the floor of your attic with all of your grandsire stuff sprawled out around you admiring the magnificence of this beautiful onyx and purple glowing sphere in your hands. You can feel the runic energy, that magic energy pulsing at your fingertips when that glob of goo lands on the sphere. And again, as you look up, you just see a single baleful eye gazing down at you reflecting the light of the, that purple light of the sphere in its iris before it releases from the ceiling drops down and lands in front of you the creature has this surprise round as it lands in front of you and as it lands on the trunk of your grandfire, grandsire's belongings. The trunk slams shut and it lands on all fours on, on this raised area. And you can see between the glowing sphere, and I imagine you brought some form of light up here with you, probably a candle or something small to, to look yeah. around. In the, the faint glow of your candle and of the sphere, you can see a creature that may stand between like four and five feet tall, but is completely crouched on all fours. Its hands and fingers are like not larger, but definitely longer than a person's. It has like the black skin of somebody who's been frostbitten for wait like so long that their skin not just turns like blue and purple, but completely black you can see its skinny arms its small shoulders are all accented with these little like bony spikes that creep out of its skin it's both its fingers and toes are have like sharp talons at the end that all curl around the edges of this box as it hunches here in front of you it's long body comes to a halt at its head 
which is entirely made up of this large glowing eye that stares out at you. And beneath the eye is this tiny, this small mouth, which opens not like with lips in the way that a normal animal does, but in a circle with lots of little teeth that all like shiver and shake and hunger and anticipation as the drool comes out as it looks in at you and leans forward. As it does, I need you to make a constitution saving throw oh. as you feel its eye begin to pulse with energy. Not the dump stat. Oh. Ooh. Okay, it is the dump stat. <laughs> it was a natural 19, bringing us to an 18 saving throw. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> You see as its its eye begins to change, it it almost falls inward like a um, kind of like a kaleidoscope or a a trick of the light, but it looks for a moment like instead of this eye in the front of this beast, it is a pit that falls forever and goes infinitely deep into its body. You feel almost yourself being pulled towards it. And as this happens, you resist this pull. You avoid 11 points of necrotic damage for that save. Okay. That would have killed him. It may have. (laughs) What do you mean it may have? It may have. You would have the 11 points. Uh, And... You, um, you hear, like, from within its gut, a noise begin to bubble up. And it's not a growl or a roar. And, but it's also not quite, like, speaking. It almost sounds like if the wind was trying to impersonate a voice that I had heard before. Like if you're deep in the woods and that whistle that, sl- that slips through the trees, you can almost like faintly hear your name. It's that kind of noise that comes from this creature. And you can hear like slipping out of its mouth, almost in a whisper. It goes, I am the knell that calls the beast. I am of blood. I am released. And it takes one step towards you. And that's all it can do on its turn. Uh, So I need you, Renshore, to roll initiative. Uh, If you roll lower than the creature, it will get another round, as the surprise round takes place before initiative. So you want this to be high. Can I take flight from the combat. Ooh, absolutely. What an excellent mechanic. Yes. So this is a homebrew mechanic that we've played out. Uh, The um, flight mechanic, the way it works, is Rancho, you can choose to accept the frightened condition, uh, which means that attacks you make are going to be with disadvantage. Um against the creature, and your movement has to be made away from uh, the thing that is causing you fear. However, in accepting these penalties, you automatically get to go first in initiative, which is excellent because I no joke rolled a nat 20 for this thing's (laughs) initiative. But even with a nat 20, using flight, you you go first. Um, And I do believe it's a DC 16 for the con- uh, frightened condition. Yes, at the end of every turn, you can make a DC 16 wisdom check to uh, relieve yourself of the frightened condition. You're absolutely right. Okay, so I just witnessed a rock <laughs> hole wait, open up in this thing's face. It gave a whole speech that I half listened to. <laughs> <laughs> its name is Nell. <laughs> That's about all I got. 
Um, I'm turning around and sprinting out of this room. I don't know what I'm holding, but whatever it is, it's coming with me. Deal. Um, so I think at this time, the last two things that you had were the cloak and the sphere. Um, do you think you would have any of the books like jammed up in your armpits or anything? No. Nope. Or do you think you just you got the cloak yep. and the sphere? I, honestly, if I'm holding the cloak, that sounds like it's going to weigh me down. That's getting dropped. <laughs> okay. So you're, you drop the cloak, you just take the sphere, and you book it out of away from this creature so mm-hmm. you can get 30 feet you make it to the uh the entrance to the attic um you have an action and a bonus action if you would like it with your 30 feet you are at like the foot or the the head of the stairs or ladder or however you get into your attic um and so, thirty feet. You're you're still in the attic, but you're right there. Would I be able to dash and close the door behind me? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, opening and closing the door is a free action. So you throw the door open, de- close, slam it behind you, and begin to dash down the stairs. Uh, if I, if you may, please make a perception check with disadvantage as you're fleeing the scene. Um, not gonna be good. It's a four. Okay. Yeah, you, as you close the door behind you, you just see that eye gazing over at you as this thing, like, leaps from the the chest onto the cloak where you were just standing. And as it lands there, boom, your door slams shut. Um, and then guards, get... guards. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You start calling for the guards. Um, you quickly move down the stairs, and as you begin to summon the guards, the depraved that was in the attic does not immediately come after you. But temporarily, we're going to remove ourselves from combat. You were calling from the guards, what would you like to do? As you see uh, servants begin to like come out of their rooms, it is not the middle of the night, but everyone has been like just set down for bed. People are coming out of their rooms. Uh, you hear the rustling from farther down as guards begin to, to get from the ground floor up to you. Uh, I'm going to tell everybody, stay, stay inside. There's, there's been a break in in the attic. Perfect. Um, do you do anything to hide the sphere in your hand? No, because it completely left my mind. <laughs> okay. There are <laughs> pressing matters. <laughs> that is totally fine. Cool. So you you shout this, you hear like scratching and clawing on the floor above you. Um, you can hear something moving around before you the guards get up to you and approach you and they go lord Renshaw, what what is the issue are, are you there's safe a, are you okay there is a depraved in the attic a, de- a depraved in are you sh- are you sure i i'm most positive his name is nell of course of course lord Renshaw, we we will deal with it immediately um and you see the the more senior of the three guards currently grabs one of the younger ones and like pushes him forward and says, "Come on, we have a job to do. Come on!" And the senior they, guy is expensive. <laughs> you see, <laughs> they <laughs> they move up the stairs um, before uh, slamming the door open. They rush into the attic. There's a little bit of commotion before it is quiet. Um, and you hear footsteps, they're walking around, um, and then one of the guards comes back down and goes, uh, Master Renshaw, I, 
greatly apologize for our lapse in security. We will search the perimeter. Um, we did not find uh, depraved in the attic, but our two uh, guards, they, they did find claw marks and they have found this. And he shows you his fingers and that slime, that, that ooze, that spit is on his, his hands. He goes, I, I believe you, Lord Ventura, that there's something, a, a beast, a monstrosity up there with you. Um, but it, it we, we will search the attic most thoroughly and then we will do a search of the perimeter. I ensure you that our security will be doubled and we'll keep the tier vault safe at all costs. Keep your eyes up. He came from the steeple. Or from the from the peak. That is good to know. And he like runs back upstairs and they for the next few hours they search and they uh around the house and the the attic um do you want them to if you'd say nothing they will alert your father of what happened unless you tell them specifically not to there's no need to wake him okay um they do a search they successfully find where it entered the attic um oh, that's good. there was a spot of the chimney that had been clawed out um it's hard to tell whether it was from this beast or from rats but it's certainly how it got into uh into the attic and so they promise they will get uh a carpenter and a, a mason in here immediately the next day to repair it um and they they have a guard stand watch in the attic all night as well as doing checks around the perimeter for this beast um, however, as the night goes on, they do not find what happened to this creature. Okay. Um, while they're doing the initial search, I of did course. at some point put the sphere in a pocket. Sure. I would say the only people that definitely saw the sphere were those first few servants that came out as you were coming down the stairs. Um... By the time the guards came up, I mean, you would have time to, yeah. to pocket it. Um, excellent. But, Rencher, you have survived the mm -hmm. first encounter with a depraved. Uh, excellent uh, constitution check. Uh, that was that was a good roll. I, I'm proud of you for that one. It was necessary. Yeah. <laughs> With that I, minus one. Yeah, it was it was only a two d six damage, and I was like, this could be this could fall kind of anywhere. The average is seven; he can survive the average. And then I rolled a uh, a five and a six, and I was like, that is not the average. <laughs> that is higher than the average. <laughs> that would have that would have downed me, um, but we're all good. Excellent. Let me make a quick note of something real uh -oh. that happened that I did not see. Shit. What was that? You didn't hide any of the shit. You told them yet you knew the name of the monster. No. He, he said it out loud. Oh my god. And then the... Are you going to get the, the cloak? Yeah, I cleaned up everything. Cool. Um, Not before you went and got the guards. Well, no. Because there was a depraved. <laughs> when you drop a depraved in your attic. Oh, wait. You just burned the dead body. <laughs> I didn't um, burn the body. I just removed the cultist's evidence. I wanted to burn the body. If, if I thought I could have burned the body, I would have burned the body. Uh, Jake, I can also have you mark down if you would like to know uh, the three guards that directly encountered you and did the first sweep uh, in case they come back will be uh, their names are Hal Malik M-A-L-I-C and Sylvester 
in case Thank you want to Thank you for only spelling Malik. I didn't know how to spell Sylvester. It's definitely not spelled right on my paper. <laughs> so, I didn't want to say it out loud. It handles three letters. So well, it, it you know there's there's a couple ways you could maybe spell how I I spelled it three letters. Okay, see, great minds think alike. How do you spell Sylvester? No, you gotta throw a fantasy letter or two in there. I think how should be spelled H Y A W L. Hail. No, still pronounced how. Still pronounced how. Okay. <laughs> Sylvester does not have the fantasy Y in it. Oh, okay. Okay. He's Sylvester too. has the normal Y. Yeah. It just. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of instead of two Y's, just the normal Y. Excellent. Cool. Um, that night. Uh, so, to recap, the guards searched. They cleared out the attic. Um, they've searched the perimeter, and they're keeping an extra tight watch here tonight and for as long as you request it. Um, they are. Uh, and that you are able to go up into the attic and either take anything that you would like back down to your room or box it back up and put it in the chest. Um, you, you have access to any of those things. Um, is there anything else Renshaw would like to do after this encounter? It was very quick, but you handled it very fast. So I don't want to stretch something out for intelligence sake because you you handled it well um i do want to go back up pack everything back in i'm not going to put it in like the the fake bottom just because there's probably like somebody up here so i'm not going to reveal that there's a false bottom um but like showing no like deference to these objects like i don't want them to seem more important than they are yeah at face value it's a piece of cloth and a couple books yeah it's a cloak and some books yeah absolutely um so i am going to put all of it away except for the signed children's copy the signed children's book and the journal itself i will put the sphere and the cloak and all that in there okay perfect easy enough cool excellent with that everybody gets a long rest through the evening as the first night of City of Shadows <laughs> is completed. Um, That's it. It's been, it's been a long night. Um, but everybody makes it to bed safe and sound after this. And there's no more events for the evening. I don't know about y'all, but Renshaw hardly gets a wink of sleep. <laughs> you just keep seeing that eye just descend in forever in your it's dreams. The eye, it's the dead body, it's the the magic grandpa, it's all of it. Yeah, Renshaw had a heavy night. We have very heavy night. Um, yeah, wonderful. The sun rises on Thalia the next morning. Uh, it is the weather is nice. This twenty second of Maiar. And the uh, the day begins in Quill and Keep with a blood curdling scream from Florian as she stands in the doorway of her uh, of her study, looking down at this gruesome body lying on the floor. Oh no! How'd that get there? <laughs> oh no! Um. She calls, summons for the guards, and Eleanor, although you know exactly what she's found, I'm sure you you play an excellent part. Yeah, I am, like, perfectly half-dressed. Um, of, in, in that, it's almost like, like a costume. You know when, like, in movies when women kill their husbands, and they, like, have the outfit ready when they call the cops? That is uh that is how I'm dressed this morning. I have like a big like long like robe on like the feathers at the That's so like, good. Oh, Mama, what happened? Eleanor, stay back. You do not you do not want to see what's in that room. There's been a horrific murder. I, <gasps> it, it 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 will make me sick. In the keep? It, it, oh, I'm sorry, what? In the keep inside our house? In the study. <gasps> are, are you are you okay? I I'm well. 
I, when did this happen? I don't know. I, you, I, we, me and, um, and Arthas were here last night and it, it was, it was pristine. And I, then... I went in and grabbed Papa's letter oh from the study God. and everything was fine. Uh, she Maybe... Like, she like grabbed your hands and you were just in there last night. Oh my gosh, that, that could have been you. Oh, and she I like, must just have gives forgotten you, to lock uh, the door. That's right. You, you, you definitely, you, that's right. I, I unlocked it today. Um, no, I left the door unlocked. Oh, right. you so left that the, way it seems it, like someone could someone have just... In. Absolutely. Yeah. Clever, clever. She's like, oh my god, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, you see the, the guards rush past, and she, she just points to the room. She's like, I don't know what happened in there, but you, you need to keep keep that. What if people we, find out? Sh- let's, we should call Oriana. I can write her a letter. The Ashen Order will take care of this. But if we have Oriana on the case, then at least it's someone that we trust. Yes, I guess she is on the Ashen Order, and she is a, she's a, such a good family friend. She would not she would not let this get out. It cannot get out, honey. Not not at the day after your your ball. I, no, I can only imagine when they would the talk, oh, the gossip goodness. would last for years. Do we know who it is? I, if you see the face, you would know that there is no way to tell who it is. Oh. Okay, well, I I have paper and quill in my room. I will draft a letter to send out to Oriana right away. Yes, thank you. I will deal no, with the guards and ensure they yeah, know. Don't, we don't need to go into the study anymore. She, she takes your hands. I'm so glad you're safe. And I'm so glad that you got such a good head on your shoulders. I need to go sit down and need a glass of water. Yes. Um, and she t- tells one of the servants, please inform, uh, tell Kier to, tell Kier to leave the house. Tell him to go and and uh, I believe there was a uh, a meeting of uh, Everin, uh, a worship of Everin, that was supposed to take place today. He was looking forward to attending. Tell him he is. Uh, encourage him to attend that for me, please. And the the servant absolutely sure. And then moves out immediately. Mm-hmm. And she goes, yes, if you could write out that letter, Eleanor. That of course. absolutely. Thank you. Um, and she goes and she sits down. The um, the maids begin to take care of her. She is pale. Um, I'm gonna go to Marisol, uh, the governor, yes. and just be like, perhaps bring my mama a glass of hot tea and um, a glass of wine. I think. I could not agree more. Do you think wine or something stronger? Maybe something in the tea. Excellent. Eve, an excellent idea. Uh, and she moves off towards the kitchen to attend to your mother. Um, I will go yeah. write Ellen, uh, Oriana a letter, and I'm going to make it very official, like, seeking help from the Ashen Order. There has been, like, a travesty within the Quilling Keep that has occurred most likely in the early hours of this morning, like trying to complete, like on the 22nd of my yes, hour, so that way it's not dated for the yeah. 21st. But this like very official letter, and then I'll also put in like, just like a drawing of, not the crime scene or anything like that, but perhaps like the house or like a smiley face, you know what I mean? Like something that just looks like a note that I tagged in there for Oriana to grab separate from the official thing. Sure. Um, Absolutely. Perfect. And then give it to a servant and be like, make haste, please. Yeah, perfect. You, the servant makes haste. They make it down to the barracks, uh, which are called... Brighthold. Brighthold, thank you. Uh, Brighthold barracks, where uh, the Ashen Order has moved in in the vacancy of the town guard as they are off fighting in the south. Um, they move in and they are they find Oriana already with a courier uh, who hands them a letter. Uh, Oriana, you uh, are make your way 
to work as you do uh, in Bright Hole Barracks. And you are greeted with these two couriers. Uh, the first one hands you a letter. It is from the Count Stoneworth. Uh, he requests your audience at the Grand Reliquary uh, this evening at dusk uh, to meet about your inquiries from the previous night. In addition to the beautifully written letter from Eleanor. Cool. My calligraphy is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it is spot on. Um, excellent. You are able to take this and... Um, yeah, I already have my plan for the day. I was anticipating the letter, the letter and I make my way up to like some higher ups to, to request the very specific investigator who is good at working at high profile cases that need to stay very quiet. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, they grant your request. Uh, again, the Lunar's name holds much sway in the Ashen Order. And they request you, they grant your request for Enforcer uh, Dayborn. And, uh, and they say they'll send for him immediately and he will meet you at Quill and Keep. Cool. Renshore, on this fine morning, is there anything you would like to do uh, following the events of the previous night? Uh, the, the girls are very active. I just don't want to leave you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was not invited to this party. For understandable reasons, I don't like committing crimes. <laughs> Says the man who walked around his house with illegal contraband in his hand. The real, the real villains are the friends we made along the way. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to take some time, look through the journal. Uh, I, I think I caught a flash last night of some numbers that looked very interesting that I wanted to kind of compare with anything I might find in the chi children's book. Absolutely. Oh. Um, you start comparing those numbers to the things in the children's book, um, and you realize that they are a cipher, imply, uh, referencing a page, a uh, paragraph, and a line. Yeah. Um, or, sorry, a page, a line, and then a word, a word. in that line. Um, and as you go through this children's book, the words absolutely line up. So those, the actual numbers in the physical journal that you have line up the to a book that I needed to make sure that we both had the same copy of so I could make the cipher. But they are uh, based off of the uh, player's handbook for Dungeons and Dragons because I knew that we both had the same the same physical copy. We have some like Lord of the Rings books that are the same, but I didn't know if they were printed the same, so I couldn't I couldn't do it. But that was the only book that I was like, I know we have an exact copy of that that's mass produced. So that book will give you all those those numbers. Good call. Well, that's yeah. fantastic. The, uh, <laughs> the the children's book was a good a good thing to look at. It felt, it just it, it was so different. Yeah, that was that was a tricky puzzle because there's no way you can solve it out of game. You have to solve it a little bit in game and a little bit out. So I'm 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 excited that you got that one. I I wish I would have just looked in the player's handbook, though. So, that would have <laughs> just why, been why would fun. you? How would you know? Just there's so many books. Yeah. Yes, there's so many books. So many books. Oh yeah. Excellent. That's fantastic. Right. Thank you. Yes, of course. So you crack that code and you start going through everything and and can solve that. Um, back at Quill and Keep, the, there is a knock at the front door and the servants open up and standing at the front door are Oriana and, uh, Enforcer Patrice Dayborn. Uh, Oriana, if you would do the honor and describe the uniform of the Ashen Order as you are no longer in your ball gowned but in your work clothes i have to pull it up real quick 
<laughs> like that, that nice Let visual reference. Oh, yeah. You gotta get the full outfit deeds. Like, we're not gonna oh, yeah. half ass. I, I saw the picture for it and I was like, yeah, that like that has to, we have to know it. <laughs> um, she is wearing a, it's like a light blue tabard. So it's like sleeveless and it comes down and at the waist, it begins to like taper in and then come to a point like by the knees. Um, it has gold like thread like throughout it gold embellishments and right on the center of the chest is the golden symbol of the ashen order which is a like four pointed star and like at the end of each point is like a ray of light that kind of like wraps around the tip under the tabard they're wearing just like a black undershirt and pants very simple and clean and each sleeve has like wrapped around it a gold band of stars that run around each of the arms um, on top of the uniform is the classic black hood with also gold stitching around it that's affixed with buckles like under the arm so it's kind of like detachable if they need to and on the left shoulder is a matching blue like cape that drapes down on the back of the uniform they have black belts that hang around their waists. They can have like whatever attachments they need necessary, like pouches, scabbards, holsters, whatever each guard needs. And then finally they have their tall black leather boots. Ooh. <laughs> Sexy. Uh, yeah, Oriana is dressed in her full Ashenor uniform. Do you have the hood up or the hood down? How, how does she wear the, the hood? I think usually when she's walking through town, she'll have the hood up, but after she, like, knocks on the door, like, out of respect, like, before entering the house, the hood is down. Perfect. No Um, hood's up in the house, John. (laughs) Come on. uh, You, so you are dressed in this wonderful, this, yeah, beautifully gothic um, Ashen Order uniform. Next to you, an identical uniform is uh, Enforcer... Dayborn. Uh, Enforcer Dayborn is a tall human man. He's in his like late 50s. He used to have like bright fire red hair, um, which is now started to gray in certain places. Um, He has, it is long enough to go like down to his shoulders, but he keeps it well kept and nice down his shoulders. And he has a not a handlebar mustache, a nice, like, thick upper lip. Um, the best I can describe it is, like, like a firefighter, that, that thick, like, firefighter mustache. Yeah. He's rocking that. <laughs> um, which, the same, has, like, that bright, bright fire red with those hints of gray in it. Um, and as, as you both are in front of uh, the Quill and Keep, uh, he extends a hand first to Oriana, Miss Lunaris, it is a pleasure to meet the uh, famed daughter of the Scion Lunaris, of course. Uh, I heard Alistair is a tough teacher. Is that true? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. The, the toughest around. Hmm. I also heard rumor that he could see the future. Is that, I, I mean, the High Lord favored him quite heavily for that. Is that bunch of mumbo jumbo or is that a uh no sir yes it it is true that's actually why he's not present in the city at the moment he is down in the capital of valdor assisting in any war needs that they they may have Hmm. i'll be uh and then the doors open and they you both enter into quill and keep uh the enforcer dayborn uh gives they uh, welcome is welcomed in uh, immediately goes to Florian uh, takes her hand kisses her hand Count Quillen it is a pleasure to be of service to you and Count Air uh, Eleanor it is a, again an absolute pleasure to be invited into your beautiful home for such a horrible occasion I apologize for having to intrude on your what would otherwise be a, a lovely fall day 
Thank you. Would, what would we call them? Cloak officer? Like what I know uh, his rank. You could call him you could call him cloak. That's more uh, informal. You could call him investigator. Yeah. Uh in this case, investigator. yeah. Investigator is probably his most yeah. the most formal. Investigator, I think a more formal title would be like he's an enforcer dayborn. Cuz yeah. I think cloak is more of like a term that like people refer them to, like all oh, the guards, all the cops, the the cloaks. But like his title would be I think like Enforcer Dayborn. Yeah, I would say like Enforcer Dayborn would be calling like a, a police officer like Sergeant so and so, and then to call them just like a generic officer would be would say investigator, yeah, investigator, inspector, anything along those lines. Yep. Um. And so, uh, he goes, "Well, I would like to put you both at ease right away. I have been." An investigator in the city for as long as the Ashen Order has been serving this the beautiful city of Thalia and I pride myself on keeping our cases on the lowest of profile um, thank you we put so much faith in you this so heartbreaking to have woken up to such horrible news we're not even sure how they could have gotten in I mean the house was so secure last night, so it must have happened this morning. Well, good news is that that is not for you to worry about. That is for me and Miss Lunaris to uncover that. Um, I will tell you that in order for us to conduct the best investigation we can, I would like to be able to keep some records. However, the records that we keep, especially for these cases, uh, when when we take these high profile murders or acts of violence or theft uh they go in uh ledgers that are not named for investigations there are they are ledgers of just called ledgers of history that we put we keep it in the secure uh, sections of the library. They, they're simply called ledgers of history. Sound very boring. Nobody checks them out. Uh, and we ensure that all the ledgers of history, when we take down any notes of this crime, uh, we will date it one month prior and one day forward. That way, if somebody investigates, they will have no idea where it happened, when it happened, and so there's no reason to look at a ledger of history. Uh, for a... There is so much tampering going on. <laughs> then why away. even have a crime scene? Is it that way? If we need to go back and investigate, and look at our notes, we can look at it, we understand how it works, but if a layman tried to, or a, a rogue journalist tried to get a hold of uh, some dirt on your family, we would ensure that they would not, unless they understood the process, they would not know how to do that um, and so it's a thank you so much yes, investigator of course um, we in exchange I understand that it, it can be difficult for us to take record of what's happening especially with your reputation on the line um, the Ashen Order is fully willing especially for the Quillins themselves uh, if you would like whatever you would like to print for uh, what makes the the news, you will you will be uh, fully read in on what gets uh, publicly told to the people of Thalia. Um, the only thing that that will be kept is our own records, and they go into our that cipher and then into the the library. But everything else, you have full. We appreciate control. the discretion. Absolutely. We appreciate you welcoming us into your beautiful home and getting our ends dirty. Right, uh, Miss Lunaris? Uh, yes, sir. Excellent. If I could request you show me to the location of this tragic accident. Of course. And I will, as I'm leading them up into the space, I'll be like, and you couldn't have simply the better partner. I know that Oriana has got to be one of the smartest and most hardworking amongst all of the Ashen Order. Hmm. And you see he kind of scratches his chin a little bit. <laughs> you see he kind of scratches his chin a little bit and goes, hmm, a partner. I haven't, I've not worked with a partner before, but 
an investigator with a partner does have a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It does. It does indeed. You see, he reaches into his cloak and pulls out like a, a little journal and he scribbles something in there real quick and he puts it back. And yeah, that does have a, a really nice ring to it. Uh, yes, a partner. Mrs. Lenaris, I'll have to play around with that idea. Maybe you can stick around for this investigation and some investigations in the future. I would uh, like that, sir. Thank you. Excellent. You make your way to the study. Um, Florian is going to point him to the direction. She does not want to be in there anymore. Um, Eleanor, do you follow them in? You're you're welcome to. You don't have to. I just get close and then, like, act, like, faint at, like, being too close. I'm like, oh. I, I, and, then, and then excuse myself. Lady Quillen, there's no shame and not one to see the horrors of this city. It can be ugly at times, and there's nothing wrong in wanting to look away from that side. Of course. Thank you. There's, we need the strong like you guys to help protect us. Well, that Ashen Order is here to do that for you. Uh, and you see, he turns into the room, and then immediately he's like, By Ryan, what is that? <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, he, you and uh, Oriana enter the room. Uh, he's like, by, by Ryan, what on God, what? And by the Ascended, oh, that is an ugly one. He shouts on the hall, who found this this morning? Um, was, it was, it was late, late Count Florian found this herself? Oh, that poor, poor woman. <sighs> All right, uh, partner, get a look at this. What are, what are your, what's your first, uh, oh, what are your first thoughts? And uh, as you come in, you are met with a similar scene to the night before. The same woman, blood on her her chest, jaw just barely hanging on to her skull, tongue removed. The uh, cultist items in front of her have been removed, as well as the banner. And then, if I remember correctly, the window was closed and locked, I believe, to keep more people from getting in. Um, aside from that, the back wall with the painting is still hanging ajar, and the furniture is moved the way it was moved the night before, uh, with the additions of some extra scooching from Eleanor at a couple pieces of furniture. I thought I might have pushed some of the furniture back so yes. it wasn't as, like, of a ritual, like, furniture pushed aside, but, like, just shaken space yeah i think it's kind of it's kind of tousled up um is the like are there like the blood mixed with the like saliva goo stuff still kind of like trailing towards the window yeah or has that been wiped up you see that eleanor unless you specifically wiped it up i, I think that's still there no, I think I might have kept the window open though. Okay. I don't remember if if there's like a clear trail that I couldn't have cleaned up. Yeah. That way, it just looks like a killer like went out, went out the window. Like maybe yeah. Because that's I think one of the first things I'm gonna point out to Enforcer Dayborn is like the trail leading to the window, and if the window's still open, like pointing as like a mode of entrance and exit. Yeah, perfect. Uh, he looks over and goes, Miss Lunaris. Uh, May I call you Oriana? You may call me Patrice. I, we are partners now, correct? Uh, correct, you, yes, sir. You see, he's gonna take a quick peek down the hall before, like, uh, before like closing the door, and then he's gonna crack a pipe out of his uh, his cloak and, and light a pipe up. Um, <laughs> for Jake, uh, you know, but, yes, Oriana, that is very astute. Uh, and he comes and he starts looking at the, uh, the, the goo and the ooze. Um, he goes, have you ever seen prints like this before? No, no, this, sir. This is odd. Um, and I think I spend some time, like, examining the body a little bit and kind of, like, evaluating the room. But most of my attention 
even though I'm like looking one way, is just focusing on what he's saying and picking up any little like extra bits that he's gotcha. What he's investigating. I'm not like truly investigating. As Deal. I had already done that the night before. <laughs> <laughs> With an untampered crime scene. Untampered crime scene. Crime scene. But I'm curious to see what he picks up, his views on it, if he gets any like extra information that maybe I didn't pick up on the night before yeah. that has on uh, like nothing that was tampered yet. Yeah, for sure. Can you give me a uh, investigation check with advantage as both of you guys are kind of going through this? <laughs> That's another nat 20 for me. Oh my god. I got a 16. Ooh. Cool, a 16. Perfect. Um, as you're going through, uh, he at this point, he's still looking at the, the prints and he's kind of like poking at it and he's these prints, I don't know of any animal that these prints would belong to. And he's like, hey, I would look at the stride. They got to approximate them to be something is four feet long, walks on all fours. Um, but I've never seen prints there. Yeah, I've never seen prints like that before. Not from any woodland creature or anything from the mountains um and they're certainly not boot prints as he's kind of poking at it um um he, he's looking at the stuff he then you see again he whips out his journal and is, is scribbling little little notes in it um kind of stands up walks back to the body um and then kind of turns to you and goes I don't know how learned you are. I know that you were, uh, yeah, I don't know how learned you are in the ways of the ascended magic, but do you know uh, the detect magic? Are you able to, to do that? Oh, me? No, no, sir, I cannot. Oh, it is a must have for this profession. And his eyes begin to glow like a, almost like a, a white like i'm a gold blue like a nice like hot fire blue um etsy cast detect magic begins to look around he goes, oh that is some nasty magic was cast here and kind of points at the body um is looking All at your it. effort for for waste um he's kind of looking at it. he says look see you see the the mouth in the in the jaw yeah. It's like, yeah. It's it's ripped up. The tongue has been been pulled out. Um, and he goes, "That is so, so interesting. The, the if if we wanted to learn more from the body, another excellent spell to know is to speak with dead, to, to learn from them. But to remove the jaw and the tongue is to prevent any of that." It's, almost seems like they knew someone was going to find this body uh, and he goes the uh the do you believe it was a, a message sir maybe a message for the quillens mm. to, to not speak up of such things mm. i didn't even consider that maybe a message as to say if you talk i'll rip your jaw off your skull it certainly could be I know for me, it's, it's certainly a, a pain to not be able to speak with this body. If Even if I cast the spell, I wouldn't be able to make out any words. It's like mm. they were trying to keep a certain investigator off the trail. Um, and he kind of strides around. And he goes, without any components, I have no way of knowing what magic was cast here. But it's it looks dark. And then he, he begins to touch the cloak. He goes, this cloak is, is fine, fine material. I, 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 nicer than the, the cloaks that we have. Um, he looks at it and he goes, faint, minor oh, magic to the cloak. You see? And he kind of holds it up to you and goes, ah, you don't have detect magic. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the cloak is magical. It would give her when she was alive some sort of benefit um, we may want to 
have have this investigated. Well, I'll, I'll I'll have someone identify this later and see what it what it can do. But it's interesting. Should, should yes. I cut a piece off for evidence? Well, we can take it back. Uh, sure, absolutely. And you see that he takes out a, a knife and, and kind of cuts a piece off, holds it up, and goes, "That is quite interesting. Usually, magic fades with as it is a magic item is torn or broken or it's reduced. This is." Still quite good. It won't help you with just this little batchet of, of it, but usually it fades significantly, but it did not. And he hands you a piece of the cloak. Cool. Um, and... And what of, what of the, the vomit and the bile and the <laughs> guts that have been spilled out of her mouth? Do you, do you see yeah. anything with that? Uh, give me a medicine check as he makes a medicine check as well. You'll make it together. Okay. can't find medicine on my sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I did it alphabetically. Maybe. That was smart. I rolled a 12. Some of the other staff that we added in after are not alphabetical. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so he looks, he's looking at it. Uh, he's like, oh, you're absolutely correct. There's more than just blood here. It is, ooh. Um, and you see he's looking around and then he goes, he kind of touches the body, feels the sides a little bit, mostly like the stomach area. And he goes, it seems that he, he kind of peers into into the mouth. Do you have do you, you have a, a um, the, the light cantrip? Do you know light? Can you do that? No, sir. I I am not magical by <laughs> any means. That is fine partner needs to learn the basics first you should really get some of these spells like i'm telling you it's gonna really help make life way better um <laughs> and he's gonna turn he's gonna drop detect magic and then cast light to kind of look into her mouth and goes look in there you see there's scarring or not scarring there's lacerations on the inside of the mouth but everything is moving out it's like something sharp and spiny, like a porcupine came from the inside out and brought all the insides with it. Which would explain, in his eyes kind of follow, the footprints away. Goes, oh, oh, that is ew. not normal. Uh, he makes uh -huh. some markings. No. Gross. <laughs> he makes markings in his book. Oh. He goes, Miss Oriana, uh, as we continue the investigation, uh, I, I have to level with you. If this is some nefarious magic of the witches, some, some archaic magic, say. Archaic magic? I, I, I have no evidence of that. But if it is archaic, or if it is runic, or if it is something, I, I've heard of from when the witches betrayed us. I have heard what of would the, the What would the witches want with the Quillen family? Why I, here? I do not know. Again, I have no evidence. I have heard of rituals like this that the witches would cast in order to bring about the depraved. I have no evidence this is the depraved. I have no evidence that this is witches. All that I know is that if word gets out that this is a witch, a cultist, or anything in the Quillen Manor, the Ashen Order barely has a hold on this city as is. Panic will not help. High Priest Ilion has done an incredible work giving us a foothold in the city in the absence of the town guard. As of right now, the populace trusts us. Along with the Quillen's reputation, for our reputation, and he touches a sigil on, the on his chest, we have to keep this quiet, even amongst probably the Ashen Order. Some, some of them like to talk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of those the the new some of those new boys from the Guiding Flame Institute like to run their mouth. They 
like to use the uniform for give them extra drinks at the tavern or whatnot. But we cannot let this scare getting to the populace. Right? No, I completely agree. I Excellent. Completely agree. I think we need to protect the Quillen name as long as not cause a, a mass panic that there might be another depraved out in the city. Speaking of, what are we doing about that? Are we... Yes. We <laughs> will have to find it. Um, because we will have to go on a little uh, monster hunt. Um, he pulls out his book and he starts that little book journal and starts to scribble things in it. And kind of almost to himself, but loud enough that you were able to make it out with your passive perception. He goes, not only, like, in addition to the populace not finding out, this is going to, keeping this secret, it's going to make excellent material for my novel. Uh, and then it's like scribbling down, he's like, this is going to be excellent. Um, we just need to crack this case. Um, he pulls back up his... Uh, his <laughs> magic. Jake, you wanted to play a, a, a noble campaign. These people are not are, are not noble. Uh, a yeah, a, a noble campaign. These people are not going to be <laughs> following the laws. That's why you're playing the campaign. I also made a promise to Eleanor yes. no, that I would keep the Quillen name. Yeah, under you're doing a good job. I would make sure that we would, I also, it was very important to me to solve the murder, to figure out what is actually happening without, you know, causing mass panic. And this guy is doing exactly what I asked of him. He's doing a fabulous job. <laughs> he just also wants to write a little novel Let's about it. Novel like he time. just wants to... <laughs> yeah. He changed um, the dates by a month and a day in a novel too. He... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you bet he is. Um, he goes, he puts on detect magic one more time. Uh, give me one final investigation check for the room. And again, you can do it with advantage because he's helping you out. Oh, with advantage? Cool, yep. I need that. My first roll was not great. <laughs> oh, the second one was worse. So we'll go with the first one, which is a six. Okay, deal. Nice. You, he looks around. Um, one more detect magic. He's kind of scanning the room. And... Uh, his eyes catch on a on the the painting. He goes, "This is interesting," and he uh, moves the painting out um, and sees behind it is the safe. Quillen seemed to be keeping something in here. No signs of forced entry. Kind of looks at the safe, repealing it back. And then he takes a, a full step back and goes, whoa, that is something special. Uh, looking inside, you see the same thing you saw yesterday. It is empty. It has that imprint of like a square where dust has settled, but it is still an empty safe. Um, and he looks in, find it on. Uh, he goes, this has it's it's necrotic he's like whatever was left in here was strong magic he says usually the if something has necrotic properties it stays with the object but something this strong kept in here for however long it was to kind of like move his finger collect dust this is it, it's residual it, the the energy stays i can only imagine what it would be like with whatever was here now looking at the square and you can see at this point see if i can um why can't i find it oh that's why i can't find it um, you can see that it, even you without having to tech magic up, can smell this like must. It smells like mushrooms. It smells like decay in this the safe. 
Yeah. Um, I thought it, that was just the dead body. Yeah, the, the dead body would throw it would throw off a new inspector, wouldn't it? And he pulls out that book again. He goes, it, uh, the, the smell would throw off a new inspector, but not an experienced one. Uh, and he goes, this is different. <laughs> <laughs> he goes the, the necrosis hangs in the air he goes this this was dangerous um, and he goes okay I'm going he's like alright I think I have a good grasp of this crime scene I'm going to have the uh, servants clean this up we'll take the body to the uh, to the hospital, which is called Etherly. The morning. I take them to Morningside. We'll see if we can identify the body, and um, we'll have them bring. And the alert their families. Yes. Yeah. They will. They will alert the family. Um, you can tell that he does not recognize this person um, as Lucille, and. He said, we'll have them identify the body. Uh, we'll have them bring the cloak back to the barracks. And we'll get some information on that. And then um, I will have to do a quick um, interrogation. But we can't call it that. We, we have to call it an interview. Because if you call it an interrogation, the subjects won't want to comply. Um... So, uh, he's like, is there anything else you would like in this room? Anything? No, sir. Perfect. All right. So, they call in the servants, and the servants begin, they um, take the body out discreetly. They'll put it in a carriage, and they'll bring it straight to Morningside. And then they clean the study and move everything back to where it was. Uh, Inspector Dayborn, Oriana, and we'll get Eleanor and Florian together. He's going to sit them down and say, Can the two of you, uh, Florian, uh, Count Florian, I know, maybe Count Quillen, uh, you found the body this morning. Is that correct? She's like, yes, of course. It was horrendous. Was like, oh, of course. And uh, Count Air Eleanor, you had found the... Or you were the person who planned the party last night, correct? The, the ball? Yes, of course, with my servants. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, I, I'll start with you then, uh, Lady Eleanor. Do you... Uh, were there any guests that you saw last night acting suspicious, sneaking away from the party, anything, anything as such? Did I notice anything? Uh, give me a history yeah, my check. My passive's pretty high. You, better write, you, you did not notice. in the room. Yeah, you did not I notice. Saying, I don't think I had anything suspicious in my notes. No, you, you did not notice anybody, um, acting suspicious. It was okay. Um... No, the, uh, the event went off seamlessly. I mean, nothing. Okay. Um, do you know who who would have access to the study? Is it just uh, Florian? Uh, um, one of our guards has an additional key, and there was a parcel left in the study that... Actually, Oriana and I ourselves retrieved towards the end of the ball. I'm worried that I might have left the door unlocked when we left. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and he marks it down. Look, you left the door unlocked. Okay. Do you know approximately what time did you did you go in there? You can get um, any, any time. You're good. Yeah, it, right before dinner. Excellent. So. Okay. Yep. Uh, marks it down. So when and you went in there, the you didn't see any evidence of tampering to get in and out of the room. No, the room was perfectly intact. Can I have a deception check from you, and yeah. deception check with advantage from Oriana? 
because he's not targeting you, but he does know that you were. He, he now knows that you were in the room before. I'm hoping so, that. Laura. I'm hoping that that means you can be like, oh, as one of the people on the case, like, of course. Are we? What are we adding to this? What are we rolling? Uh, deception. Deception. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, nineteen. Wow. Uh, Eleanor, how'd you do? Twenty. Wow. Okay. Perfect. Not not dirty. I would tell you. Ikea built. He got an eighteen, so he was right there, but you both skate right past him usually i, I don't want to give you give it away uh what they roll often uh but he was so close i was like oh that, that was you guys yes <laughs> let's beat it um and you see he nods like, oh absolutely okay uh marks everything down and then turns to floor and goes and count quillen what was kept in the safe behind the the painting in your study and you see she cocks her head and goes the, the safe behind the painting he goes yes the the painting the safe and there's something of significant value and power most likely behind there that was removed uh by the intruder can you tell me what that was and you see she is very confused and uh Eleanor, your passive perception, you can tell, or not perception, your insight, you can tell that your mom is being 100% truthful. She did not know that painting had something behind it. Um, she has no idea what's in the safe. And uh, Dave Warren was like, ah, that is incredibly interesting. So we are to believe, which I do, but we are to understand that somebody broke into your study during the eve of that there was most certainly people here a, a, an incredibly risky evening to then steal something from you that you did not know you possessed that they themselves did That is very interesting. An oddity. What a unique case you have, investigator. I I hope you can solve it. Well, I will, will put my best foot forward and I can promise you that there has not been a case that I have not solved yet. And so we will come to the to the bottom of it and get the truth uh, settled. We will not get the truth out there because we, we don't want that for, for anybody. But we will get this settled and we will ensure that it does not happen again because that's the important part. Um, Any way we can assist. Excellent. Um, it was, yeah, if I could have, uh, the only thing I can think of is if, uh, Florian, if I could have a list of the people that were in the that access to the study that day, I would greatly ap appreciate it. And Florian goes, absolutely, I'll send it to your office um, immediately. And he goes, excellent. Um, and he goes, uh, Miss uh, Count Air, Eleanor, is there anything uh, I can do for you? Uh, we're currently removing the body. We're cleaning the study. Uh, is there is there anything excess we can do before continuing on our investigation? I don't want you to believe that we left without tying up what ends we could. No, I'm just, I'm so thankful that this is in capable hands, and uh, it's just so heartbreaking what occurred here. I'm, the, the faster it gets taken care of, of course, the better. And we will take care of it as quickly as possible. Uh, he turns to you, Oriana, and says, Miss Lenaris, do you have any questions for the Quillens? No, sir. I believe I recorded as much information as as I can. Excellent. Um, excellent. Then we will take our leave. Thank you again for allowing us into this house and into your keep and allowing us the prestigious opportunity to take this case for you. 
Um, he says, uh, once we have the body identified, we will uh, send the name over to you. Um, we will, uh, and then at your discretion, we will alert the, the family of the deceased. Excellent. Um, cool. And so with that, uh, he stands up and uh, it's the the count yeah the counts and then leaves the house um, um i think as we're leaving like as we're like getting near the door after we said goodbye to the quillins yeah i think i'm gonna bring up to him um you you had asked lady eleanor if she saw anyone suspicious at her ball yes last night and I'm just remembering that I believe the Cambridges uh, spoke had broken on their wheel. <laughs> and although I, I don't see much connection to the case, I did find it odd that a spoke would break on a, a wheel that was not moving mid-ball. And I did notice that they had the carriage parked out behind the, the quilling keep as... Some people were attending to it. Hmm. That is very interesting. And you see he kind of strides along the the walkway of Quill and Keep and looks to where you point out the the cart was, the, the carriage. And he goes, if you were working on the carriage and you happen to be either very perceptive or slacking off, I imagine you may be able to see into the window of the study, don't you think? Yes. I wonder if one of our, the servants of the Kimbridges caught a glimpse of anyone coming in or out of that window. Um, so he says, he pulls out his book again. He says, so our leads right now, we have to, we have the Kimbridge servants need an interview. We need to follow up on that piece of cloak that you have. Yes, sir. I will. I will get on that. Um. You. We have the. Um. The cloak. We have to find a name of the deceased. Mm -hmm. See if we can trace down anybody who knew uh, who she was. And last off, the the big one is this creature. That is now roaming the city. Um, Lovely. I am going to, as this creature is our most pressing matter, uh, I'm going to make my way to the uh, the rangers on the outskirts of town and see if they have any advice for hunting down things that should not be. Um, Keeping it as discreet as possible. I also have some uh, bookkeeping I have to do for this case uh, with the yeah, National of, of Library to make sure that this gets filed discreetly and appropriately. Um, which uh, I will leave, let me know what you would like to follow up on any of these leads, and uh, we will reconvene uh, sometime tomorrow or. The, to continue the investigation. Yes, sir. And you see he pulls out his book and he's like, what should we call this? The investigation of... The investigation of the murder at the ball. Hmm. Well, we'll work, I'll workshop that. I'll workshop that. Puts it away. <laughs> uh, yeah. We will meet first thing tomorrow um, at the barracks. Uh, okay. Good day, Miss Lenars. And he makes his way out. Uh, as he leaves, we uh, will press on with the rest of our day. Uh, we are going to take a quick break as a lot of information has just hit us. We are <laughs> yeah. breathing a sigh of relief from not being dead. And uh, we need to wipe some sweat off our brows 
and take a quick stretch. We need to process everything. We need to process, we yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but we will be back shortly for the rest of episode three of City of Shadows. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Ethereum. A world that was built around a cataclysmic event known as the Convergence, when the realms began to converge with one another and destroy the mortal realm. A group of nine heroes known as the Novem stopped the force and ascended into godhood. As society rebuilt, the year was reset to zero and a universal calendar was formed around the destruction of the old world. New gods, known as the Ascended, walked among the mortals of the realm interacting with them and shaping the birth of a new society, starting with the ancient cities that survived, as well as assisting in the construction of new cities. Their involvement left behind evidence of their greatness and power. These cities are now considered touched cities and are epicenters for religion. Yet the new god's might and aura was too great for this realm. The gods withdrew, allowing mortals to govern their own destinies and reach ascension as well. However, they still watch over and protect from the Ascent. The Ascended brought new magic to the world, Ascension magic, that was formed from the Convergence. This is the well of magic that fuels the gods and then can be gifted or cursed to other mortals. However, the world of Ethereum was already familiar with magic, as some were born with archaic magic, originating from the natural chaos within the realms and embedded within the ley lines. Over time, Aetherians honed a third magic through the manipulation of runes onto the natural resource of siphons found deep within Aetherian. This runic magic is wielded and imbued into artifacts by anyone who is armed with a spheric focus and willing to learn its language. Aetherian's people feature all matter of races and culture intertwined with each other across the land. People were forced to come together after the destruction of their homes to rebuild anew. Our world is full of stories and adventure, of comedy and of tragedy. So, please join us at the inn for a tale or two, and welcome to Ethereum. The year is 1658, and a small kingdom rests in the valley between the Dromo Sea and the Gallatin Mountains, the nation of Kalidor. Ruled by five high houses and their sovereign, we place our attention on House Blackspain and the horrors that await it. Once, the Veramore Woods was home to an ancient race of witches, but 200 years ago, dark creatures began emerging from its shadowy branches, the depraved. With the arrival of these horrors, High Lord Caspian Blackspain sent his sister, the Duke, into the woods to negotiate for aid, but she never returned. Rather, the people of the woods released the depraved against Kalidor and its people. This launched a war between House Blackspain and the Moors that still lasts today, as shortly after the High Lord was hexed by one of their most powerful witches, binding him to their wicked ritual and transforming him into a shriveled, undead state. The High Priest declared all forms of their ancient magic banned within the lands of Blackspain, and for the exile of all people who possess its power. And so, for the next 70 years, a newly formed religious century worked tirelessly to eradicate the Moors. We move forward to the winter of 1613, when the people of Blackspain once more become prey to the terrors of the depraved. For years, the attacks were ceaseless, and the woods the Calorians lived in for centuries had become unsafe. All along the path were forced to relocate behind the walls of the city of Thalia. But there was hope against these dark creatures. The high priest of this age determined that the increase of a second type of magic, runic, had lured the depraved out of the depths of Veramor. And so a second ban was placed, leaving only those with the holy power from the ascended allowed to practice magic. And there was once more peace within House Blackspain. Three years ago, a civil war broke out across Kalidor over the rightful successor to the throne, and House Blackspain sent their forces to fight for Queen Tavina Rember. But their duties of protection against the Veramore Woods 
could not be abandoned, and so the pristine council decreed a new force shall be made, one that had already worked for centuries past with the Valiant, to stop these horrific creatures. And so came the rise of the religious guard, the Ashen Order. Led by the Flame of Blackspain, High Priest Ilian Malak marks the path for justice and protection within the city of Thalia, enforcing the ban across archaic and runic magic, but even their holy might cannot stop what lurks in the woods. The depraved are coming, and no one is safe. Thalia stands alone, but there will come a day when their High Lord will be made whole again and the depraved defeated. Until then, the pyres are being lit, and within the City of Shadows, the witches will burn. We return to Thalia on this beautiful day as Mm -hmm. the inspector and uh, Cloak Lunaris leave um, the Quill and Keep, and our three Highborns are going to go about their day as they please, as these crazy events of the pre-evening have just unfolded. Um, Eleanor, we'll start with you. How would you like to spend your afternoon? Yes, I think I'm just going to go to my mom. Yeah. Uh, hopefully she's feeling a little better now that the inspector has come and we've put shit in her tea. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mama, how how are you faring? I, much, much better. First off, knowing that body is out of the... Not in our home anymore, yes. of course. The, again, excellent idea involving Oriana. She got the perfect inspector and having her part of this made it so much easier. Thank you. Yes, I, I know that we can rely on her for an extra level of discretion. Yes. I should get to the ink tributary soon this afternoon and start drafting up something that we can print. Uh, yeah, hopefully they can identify the body and get yes. that get that to us. It seems like the inspector... Yes, that would be significant, for sure, in in whatever story we have to to spin. What should we tell Papa? I will... Perhaps I should speak to him. Yes, that would be be good. Tell him... Tell him there was a body found on the estate and that the Ashen Order has taken care of it. Of course. I just, his imagination will often get the better of him. I don't need him fretting, nor do I need him, the less people that know, simply the better. I, I agree. Of course. Yes, a body on the estate and the Ashen Order has taken care of it. Um, yes, that would be... I was wondering, Mama, before, earlier... Yes? You were speaking with, um, the Chirval, the Viscount. Yes. What? I just, I, I can't remember what business that we are attending with him. We, yes, we were discussing, um... The, I, as you know, the, his, their family has had some, the changes of airship. Of um, course. And with so his... So heartbreaking. Yes, with his um, engagement with Oriana broken. Uh, oh. Um, are, does he not know that? Or, yeah. No, no, yeah, no. Okay. Uh, with... I think that's just Jacob <laughs> reacting. <laughs> yeah, I put those puzzle pieces together so far. Yes. Uh, Arthas wanted to use me as a matchmaker of sorts. Uh, with oh. the Tyrvalds in such a 
precarious place without their um, their ancestral home, without Ethros Grove being under the Black's Bane control. Of course. Well, I'm sure we could find some type of match for yes. uh, I'm sure we, we know so many of the Viscounts. Yes, we were looking for Viscounts. If we could find, I uh, would love to be able to set him up with a, a count uh, that way to help their status. But uh, to find someone, eh. If we set him up with a count, though, that was the issue we were discussing. If we set him up with a count, then he loses their their name, their title. Renshaw is set up well, but then the count, the Viscount airship, passes down yes. because a nice second daughter yes. would be ideal for Renshaw. Precisely, and so I I told Arthas that I would keep an eye out for some of the eligible women coming out of Scroll Spire in the next couple of years, and we'll at least keep an eye out. Um, well, that is that is wonderful news. I mean, I know Renshaw is taking the breakup um, rough, but... I was going to say, not we well. Some may say. I just... But, him and Oriana were so good together. No, they well, were why, so why did good. They, why did they end their engagement? I wish I knew more. You are very in tune with the current class at Ravenwell Prep, with the current students at Ravenwell Prep, and especially the current students coming out of uh, Scroll Spire. If you know of any uh, of any eligible bachelorettes, even from other houses, uh, I, we can organize them to come visit if need be. But the tier balls yes, have always I been can... good to us, and I would the like next... to yeah. The next season. Yes, we have we have all of winter to, to plan, but Great, I know good. that. Let yeah. I'm sure have his his space to grieve. Yes, yes, we do need to give him that. Unfortunately, us nobility don't have time on our side. They the, the ton expects quite a bit, so he can grieve as much as he can. But at some point, we we. He has to choose to uphold his Viscount responsibilities or be left behind. So, but most we can do is help him out. I agree. Uh, yeah. Well, I am going to go make appearances in town. Excellent. I of course. Wish to uphold uh, the proper image. Um, Yes. I will. I will see you later, Mama. Yes. Have a good day at work. Let me know if there's anything that I can do. Absolutely. I will, of course, be in touch with Oriana as well uh, to get notice on the investigation. Excellent. Thank again. Thank you so much. It was an excellent idea. And then I'll just like peck her cheek. And uh, before I head out, I actually would like to draft up another letter yeah absolutely and this time write to sad boy himself Renshaw. <laughs> um and fill it with like two pages of fluff like utter thank you for attending the ball it was such wonderful i always <laughs> love it when you know our yeah. families can come together in celebration our families have such a long withstanding history da 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 type of uh, thing in case any servants would like read this <laughs> letter as it gets delivered um, and then in it ask him to uh, meet me for dinner at Starlight Brews um, okay. in Thornley Excellent. later. Cool. Beautiful. Sweet. That sounds good to me. Perfect. Um... Cool. And that was going to you said to Renshaw. Yes, cool. to the Tirbal. Excellent, perfect. Cool. You are you write that letter. That letter makes its way over just a couple streets to the Tirbal household. Um, actually, they, the Tirbals live on Nightingale Avenue as well. Correct. Yeah, yeah. they're they're, they're yeah. neighbors. Yeah, we're like almost next door. <laughs> yeah, goes scoots right around the corner. 
Um, where, how does this letter find Renshore? Uh, Renshore is just sitting, reading a book. Um, he's probably sitting in his room. He probably doesn't want anyone knowing what he's reading. So he's gotcha. probably just shut in his room. Just just going through those books? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's currently focusing on ley lines and how to find them. Perfect. By somebody. Excellent. Yes, that book in particular uh, details the existence of ley lines um and how they are geometric shapes driven into ethereum itself that, uh, not physically carved into the the earth but they are present and they seem to have innate magical properties and as you read this you read about how they can flux sometimes, they shift, but it is rare and powerful when these ley lines move. Um, there are some questions on whether or not Ethereum had ley lines before the convergence, or if they're purely a post-convergence natural phenomenon. Um, there, there's some speculation on that. Uh, and most of it is talking about how the they scholars and mages are trying are doing research to see how the ley lines both give off that uh, archaic magic that comes from nature as you would expect them to but also because there's so much like geometry involved with these ley lines if there is some innate connection and because it involves the planet of Ethereum, if it has some connection to runic magic as well, if there's a tie there, and they're, they're working through that. And then further speculation that does, do they involve, if it does come from the diver, the convergence, does it involve um, ascended magic? Like it, it, how, how much is it connected to? And so it's, there's a lot of, of play in, into that question of, of, of ley lines. And you get, you, you start reading through and getting read up on on the ley lines is there a map in that book that might de pick, depict like where ley lines are around ethereum there is a kind of shift but yes there is a map however it does not feature calidor in it mm -hmm. it primarily looks at the ley connections between the three blessed cities um and those are the cities that survived the the convergence and it's not like they're directly connected by like one ley line one ley line one ley line but like mm -hmm. here are the three and these are kind of like the, this is the pattern that that involves the three and so most of them the the map in it are focused on that that hub of ethereum and not on little calidor that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah but it's good information. Um, do you do any study on the cloak or the uh, sphere? Um, I haven't looked at the cloak yet, really. Um, and I've looked at the sphere. Knowing that it's a sphere and like a little scared to touch it. <laughs> You know, I I know it is a source of energy, and I don't want to accidentally blow up the house. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> Give me an Arcana check or a Legend check. Was it Arcana, Legend, or um, I would say just Investigation. Your choice, and you could do it with advantage because you said you have your. Grand Sire's journal, and then the book. Um, what was it called? The Runic Art. Thanks for the um, advantage. Yeah, you can thank Grand Mage Ekaron for mm. his hard work. 
That's uh, eight. Arcana. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you you look at this the sphere. You are able to decipher that it is very powerful. Um, but you you and you understand the breadth of what needs to be learned to understand this sphere. Um, you know that you learn that there are varying um, types of, of spheres, anywhere from you have uh, wells, which are smaller, and then siphons, which are usually larger. Um, you can have greater siphons, grand siphons, like they, they, different types of siphons have different types of powers. And you learn that siphons ha and wells, all spheres, are tuned to a specific school of magic when they are created. But as far as the one in front of you, not on an eight, buddy, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fair. But uh, if you spend time studying it, you will absolutely, you know that, like, I can learn this. There's just a lot to learn. Uh, and then, all of a sudden, there is a knock at my door. Yes. <laughs> um, the sphere and all of the books, except for the children's book, kind of get shoved under the cover, yep. the bed or something, you know, under a blanket. Uh, and I go and open the door. Cool. Uh, your servant hands you the letter from Eleanor, and it says exactly what Aubrey described with a call to Starlight Brews this evening. Is it a was it still sealed? Calligraphy. Yes. Okay. Wow, Ooh. this is a lot of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> There's like an extra bolded letter at the end to try to like direct your attentions back into the only part of the letter Please that matters. Read this, yeah. Yeah, I was I was hard skimming, hard skimming. Like it, it's a really like over the top kind of shitty thank you. Like yeah. no one wants this as a thank you note. <laughs> um, but I do I do catch the dinner invitation. Perfect. Um, sweet. Does it say if Oriana's gonna be there? It doesn't. <laughs> Um, Oriana, if it's okay with you, I'm going to wait for a little bit because your next meeting is at dusk. So while there's still daylight in Thalia, I'm going to jump back to Eleanor. So Eleanor, you said, uh, where are you headed to get some hot goss? I am going to head into downtown um, and go to the high parlor. The, the gentleman's club. Perfect. So you move from Nightingale Avenue. This is kind of the first time we're moving away from, from the street. And you make your way north through the grand, uh, with the Caldwell Gates, named after the Count Caldwells themselves. Uh, and as you move through, you begin to move up through Avondale Hill, which is pretty much the oldest part of the city. It has its own wall because of where the city was originally built. On your right, as you move through, at the top of Avondale Hill is the tall black spires of Castle Greywall, always looming down, looking on the city. You move in and out of their shadows as the sun is passing noon and moving more on to midday, and you can see those, the black spires and the dark bell tower uh, eclipse the sun as you move through which as you make it past Greywall Keep you move over the river uh, you move through the Old Water Tributary which is the river that runs through Avondale Hill and on your left is both Old Water which is the, the pool of water that's been here in provided Dahlia with life since its founding, as well as the beautiful waterfall, Iron Falls, which comes off the Gallatin Mountains, falls down and splashes into old water. 
the roar is both loud and majestic, but also calming and soothing as you move over the bridge of Old Water Tributary into Thornley, the farthest north um, district of Thalia, have, hosting most of their uh, guild halls and where a lot of the uh, uh, a lot of that um, the, the guilds will, will operate their their work in the mm-hmm. city. Um, and so you you moved to there and you moved to you said the high parlor. High parlor. Yeah, you make your way to the high parlor, a gentleman's club of sorts, but open to all the nobles. Uh, and they, you enter in and you see a plethora of people that were invited to the party um, and that uh, have relations to people that were connected to the ball. You see a lot of the that the, the ton is here this afternoon yeah gossiping i think i'll just like order a glass of wine and then kind of like make my way to like different tables just jumping in in conversations doing a little gossiping trying to definitely like leave hints of like oh like how did you guys like the party and like trying to get people trying to like lead the conversation to get people to speak positively about it yeah absolutely i think i also before i would have left or like once we arrived in uh the dish like in the downtown area of thornley yep. um i want to send my ladies maids uh gwendolyn and odette sure. like out to other places where like the nobles are less in attendance and try to get my servants to try to hear what like the other servants are saying that like the noble people are saying like i want the whole spiel i want a full peer review report of (laughs) my party excellent um yeah let me give me a gossip check for me Fifteen. Perfect. You walk around. Uh, you, for the most part, hear very good things about your party. Um, the people here were anyone who attended was very excited to attend. Uh, you can definitely tell that there's some jealousy from people who didn't attend, uh, which you love to see. Like that just boosts your ego so much. Um, you have there's some talk about some gossip about how the Watlins didn't attend. And how mm-hmm. they're still they're yeah, they're still cooped up in their uh, mansion with their most recent child that they adopted, Virgil, and how nobody's seen Virgil uh, in in a while, and the gossip that goes with the Watlins, um, uh, and then yeah, talk about how they didn't attend the party. They they you know what you gonna do. Mm-hmm. Um, There was some talk, uh, 15 gossip. You get some of the, some of the, the, these people mentioned how they think they see uh, Count Bentley and how she was looking at, shot a couple, stole some glances from uh, Count Redvor and how there's always talk of the two of them being close since childhood and they still, people still think that they stole some glances from each other at the ball um and then uh but for the most part it, everything was your party was very well received um there is on a 15 you even hear gossip about how the good wine was kept out all the time <laughs> and like that they yes. people noticed and they they're talking about it so Drink well at Quarry. <laughs> they have the good wine, and the good wine stays out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then I guess I'll do before I forget. When your ladies' maids come back eventually, when you hear back from yeah. them, um, they have uh, from talking. They hear mostly the same. There was talks on how the Kimbridge's carriage broke down. They were able to find out about that. Um, and then there there was some talk uh and then there was what was the other gossip 
Um, Come on, Gwendolyn and Odette, get me the good shit. They. I only rolled an eight. <laughs> Let's see. They would they would learn from other servants. Uh, there was some talks from the the Caldwells um, about how the quill the quill ball is beautiful, but it's always the same theme. It's always fall themed. There's not there was no like big surprise. It's just it's always the the ball is always the same, and they do a good job, but it's always. It's always the same colors. It's always the same setup. There's no big, big pizzazz to it. The Caldwells, being elves, have been around for a very long time, and they're mm-hmm. are known for being quite snooty about their, about the parties they go to. But it's the fucking fall equinox. <laughs> <laughs> that is the theme. That is the theme. It's all. It, of course, it's always the theme. That's why we have the ball. Uh, yeah. Eleanor is just like. But, uh, but it's the fall equinox. It's 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 a theme inherent to itself. How am I supposed to? What extra theme am I supposed to? If you add themes to parties that don't need themes, it just suddenly becomes corny. Tacky. The theme is good wine, good conversation, and beautiful decorations. I, Lady Lady Eleanor, we we absolutely agree. That's that's of course. What anything else would be tacky? Anything more would be tacky. Exactly. I mean, you have to walk a fine line. If it was just a party, a ball in the middle of the courting season, that would be one thing. But to end out the season, I think that tradition is an important facet of party planning. Lady Eleanor, if you do something to surprise a 300-year-old elf, it's only going to be embarrassing for yourself. There's nothing that you can do to surprise them that will keep your honor intact it it just it can't be done you're right you're right that caldwell's opinion is not a a good measure absolutely not of success okay and they attended and they they will attend again and so they they, again there was no ill will towards you they didn't say oh eleanor didn't plan a good party just they said eleanor upheld the traditions of the Quillens, which is something to be proud of. Of course. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, unless there's anything really pressing, I'm going to move to Oriana. Yes. Oriana, you make your way as the sun begins to set, also up to Avondale Hill, with the roar of Iron Falls and the eyes of Castle Greywall looking down upon you to the Grand Reliquary where uh, you enter and are greeted by Count Stoneworth himself. And he is standing in one of the wings of the museum with some artifacts that are uh, sitting in these beautiful display cases. The particular place that he's at right now is this beautiful, like, um, these relics from to, to look like this big feast that was held during one of an important year of Thalia. So there's a bunch of like magical, especially particularly um, ascended artifacts or relics that were, were part of this either this specific event, the specific feast of Thalia's history, or ones that kind of fit that dinner, uh, grand dining hall theme or in this room. He sees you enter and goes, Miss Lunaris, it is good that you've taken me up on this offer. With your... Of course. Hopefully your tasks on the, with the Ashen Order weren't too strenuous today. No, no. Very good day. Productive day. You seem a little shaken up. Yes. Well, after our conversation last night... I figured that you have questions regarding the shipment that we had come in from the Graydon Academy and the dead mages found in uh, Octavia Hill. I 
can assure the Ashen Order that the all the runic artifacts that we ordered were accounted for. They were simply delivered by alternate means, which cost me a fortune to pay a new um, Oh, of course. New uh, Yeah, I could warrior. only imagine. Yes. I, and do you normally take inventory like um, before your shipments? Like, do you know what you're expecting, or do you normally just take inventory after you receive the shipment and just see what it, what comes up? Like, do you do you have an anticipation of what which shipments are always coming in? We know exactly what we are bringing to the city, Miss Lunaris, and we ensure that what we order is what we bring, um, especially when dealing with objects of. Alternate magics. We are very particular with what we order and what we bring. I can assure I can assure you that the mages that were found just north of Octavia Hill was cer- certainly not our, not my doing or anything through what we did. I have no knowledge of why, what happened to them. I simply know that. Their, the four bodies were, were they a, were they a part of the the shipment and travel or did it yes did it seem like they they intercepted the, the shipment no the those those four mages were the ones specifically requested to bring this shipment into the city um and then the package arrived half a day late by some other employees of mine who happened to be passing through the area um the you would know Octavia Hill is a village of Blackspain just south of the city. Um, and he says the fortunately they they recovered everything without any losses. So whatever happened to those mages, I believe were not about not thievery or street theft. It was probably due to their affiliation with the academy. So. Honestly, as much as I appreciate their business, and I do not think they had did any wrongdoing, in this war, four less mages may be a good thing. Um, but how how often do you expect shipments for runic items? Rarely, only when they are requested to me, and I, I find them. But the the artifacts were again all accounted for and recovered. Um, do you, do you know who requested this particular shipment? I do, and that is between the buyer and myself. Did, did this buyer receive their shipment yet? Yes. Speaking of potential buyers, the real the reason that I brought you here, aside from setting the Ashen Order at ease about the that shipment. A mysterious inquirer going by the name BC Countings has been pestering this reliquary looking to purchase this. And he points to one of the uh, display cases. It is a, it's called the Chalice of Old Water. And he shows you this beautiful, like, silver and, um, like, gray metallic uh, chalice that is it's engraved all on the side it's got gemstones inlaid in it and the stem looks like uh, a tree that's like wrapped up and holding up the, the cup of the chalice and he said they've been pestering this reliquary about perch- looking to purchase the chalice of old water then two nights ago an attendant discovered that this chalice is a replica. Mm-hmm. The true artifact has gone missing. It is not my direct uh, responsibility to maintain the reliquary. However, myself and the reliquary do much business. They are one of our best patrons as they often request rare relics and items 
to be not only used for to put on display, but also for protection and for security. So they came to me immediately. And now I'm coming to you to discreetly work with the Ashen Order and find this chalice. The chalice itself is not a dangerous artifact. It is simply a cup that when filled with liquid, uh, as long as all of the liquid is not poured out, it remains full. And so you could fill it halfway with water, drink a sip, and it is still full. Or pour half of it out, and it fills itself up again, as long as it is not completely emptied. So it of itself is not dangerous. It is of purely ascended magic. It is a, a difficult to enchant, as it was blessed mm -hmm. by by the by the ascended, but not particularly dangerous. What is yep. what What does the safety typically look like for your wares that have already been in here in shipment before they are given out to your buyer? Do you have anyone guarding? your items the shipments often come discreetly to let's see where would they go um, I guess you would just say they would go to a variety of stores uh, you would know most likely uh, you could buy them like from him personally so you would go to like the Stoneworth Manor, but that's like very personal. Uh, most people would either get their stuff from. Let us see. So he doesn't have like a warehouse of where he stores no, his items. No, they, there's as not. As soon as they arrive, he immediately gives them out to the buyers. Yes, you would know as far as like runic objects. Um, the veil is a. Uh, group of elite shops that are known to sell uh illegal goods or um contraband within new Ellsport. and then you would also know that duskfall is a not an official place but you know that it is a name for the area behind iron falls where people will set up black markets and, and mm -hmm. sell things. And so and at no point, you know for a fact, there's no way that Stoneworth would ever, even to you, admit that he gives, he sells things to the yeah. Vale or to Dustfall. <laughs> but you are thinking if there's a way to get that stuff, those are the two places I would go. Yeah. And, and what did you say, what was in the shipment for that, that was attacked on Atavia Hill? What was in that one again? That information is between myself and the buyer. Um, but I can promise you that everything was accounted for. The only thing that was not were the couriers. And to be fair, they were also accounted for. They were just dead. That is fair. Without disrupting the agreement between you and your buyers. I don't need to know any buyer names or such, but have you received any orders for any spheres recently? Let's say in, in the last year? No. I have not had any orders for spheres. Um, what, what about any runic books? I know they technically aren't magic, um, magical artifacts, but do you curate any any books on runic or learning how to read runic? Um, he rolled a nat one on his deception, which sucks. Uh, so with your insight, you can tell that when you mention the spheres, he is being truthful that nobody has ordered spheres but when you say spheres like something that clicks with him there's like a, a shiver or you can tell in his face like there's a grimace that 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 struck something 
Um, and then, uh, actually, I'll use this. Give me, give me an investigation check, real quick. It's Nico. It's Nico. Hello. I rolled a thirteen. Thirteen. I will say that on a thirteen investigation, the the only thing brought up that would involve spheres so far is you know that the mages all any mage would have a some form of sphere on them. Sphere on them. Yeah. And that's the only connection that you currently have to, to spheres. And what about the runic books? Did, did he say if he curates any of those? Uh, if occasionally the in, uh, in priest of the enlightened will request books for study of Ryan, as we have a runic band, but Ryan does not. And much of Kalidor also still worships Ryan and his mastery of a runic magic and so i we have been careful on who we the selection of books i won't just give any book to any priest but over the years since the ban we have a, have the enlightened has approved the uh purchase of books for study not for use have any been requested lately off the top of my head, no. But okay. I'll have to. I will check my ledgers if there's anything. Yes, if if you have any records in your ledgers of any spheres or runic books come through in the past or come up recently in the next few weeks, please please do reach out and let me know as we investigate about these mages and just to keep the safety of the city. I certainly don't want to infringe on any of your rights with your buyers or such, but just to keep track of what's coming in and out of the city. Yeah, of course. And let me be crystal clear. I am here present and not a servant doing this interaction with you because this, the discretion of my business is important and these do de this degree of issues i handle personally because that is how i i deal business when i find it important to that importance do not forget where the stonefall name sits and where the lunaris name sits because although Completely it may hold power in the ashen order there are chambers of black wall of gray wall keep that even you are not allowed in are we clear very clear sir i am simply here more as a servant for you and your business to make sure you don't have any more dead couriers on your hands wouldn't want a scandal to get out that you have five dead mages and I'm just trying to keep this under wraps, keep your business safe, and keep the city safe. And that is all. Good. If we were able to discreetly recover this chalice, um, I will be sure that there is a bidding reward. And I know that your family is not wanting for money, so I'm sure that there will be, we can come with an agreement to that is fitting for the task. And Count Stoneworth dismisses you. Cool. So I will leave the reliquary. That man rolls awful. He rolled so bad at the party <laughs> to give information away. He rolled a nat one. He's just, he's a bad liar. It, it's part of his character now. He's a bad liar. He's a bad liar. He's a bad liar. Bad liar. Which is tough for his, his occupation. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> he, he should be a little bit better at that by now. Um, and then I will, after this inter interaction, make my way to the restaurant yes. to meet up with my two friends Excellent. for dinner. You make your way to Thornley, where you are within 
It was the Starlight Brews, correct, Eleanor? Starlight Brews, yes, where Eleanor had requested. The Noble Restaurant, uh, Starlight Brews is, uh, especially during dinner time, has the, uh, is serving their regular patrons as well as many of the other nobles that have gotten out of the chambers of Greywall Castle, Greywall Keep, and have made their way down to to spend the evening socializing, uh, whether it's at the brews or at the high parlor or around in Thornleaf. Um, and you guys are very, especially with a count here, very easily can get a uh, table by yourselves. So how was everyone's day? <laughs> Um, <laughs> but I'm sure we had, uh, Oriana and, uh, di- investigator, enforcer Dayborn come this morning to investigate. Of course, we told him that when we went to retrieve the letter for my papa, the room was still normal right and um when I got home (laughs) (laughs) there was a depraved in the attic are you alright? I yes I ran like the dickens so (laughs) <laughs> the creature, it left my keep and went to yours. I mean, that's assuming it's the same one. The guard said it had chewed through our chimney to get to our attic, which seems like a lot of dedication to get to a room full of junk. Also, also feels like it would take a long time. I don't know if it's the same one that left your house and like went straight well, to mine. I mean, did but... did the guards kill it? There's a depraved loose in this city. There must only be one. Must or, there? Did your guards kill it? No. Did any guards get hurt? No. I ran. By the time the guards entered the room, it had gone. Why were you in your attic? I was just looking through old things. I had a busy day yesterday before being attacked, and I was just starting to do some stuff. Mm-hmm. So it, it it fled your your manor? Yeah. It, it it's gone. Yes. How big was it? Yes, describe it in detail. I'm gonna take out a sketch <laughs> yeah. pad. Um, it was like four, five feet tall, but like crunched down on all fours on top of like a, a box. It had like, its hands were like, and feet were like normal size, but like the appendages were extra long. The whole skin was black, like, like, like burnt toast, frost, frost burn kind of black. Burnt toast is good. Um, <laughs> it had a, a giant eye and, and a circular mouth just full of teeth. And the eye had like this, I, I don't even know how to describe this next part. The eye like went into the head and it just became like an endless cavern of blackness. And like it could feel like the, there was magic. Like it, it, it pulled me towards it. Wildly uncouth and extravagant <laughs> and i'm gonna try to like do edits with you to try to get the most accurate drawing based off of your description as we go uh his name is nell it how it's it spoke to you yeah like yeah it 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 was like my name's nell and i'm the one who calls the beast it said my name's <laughs> nell <laughs> well, it might, it might have said it exactly like that. It was, it was scary. Yeah. yeah. I usually just course. be happy I know what it looks like. I'm certainly yeah. happy I remembered. 
Which is interesting because when I was with Enforcer Dayborn and we were investigating the body, he had noticed that, if you remember, her jaw was, was ripped out, but he also noticed a lot of scratches coming up through her throat and the inside of her mouth as well. Ooh. And he suspected that something had come out of the body and then fled the scene. Like a... And so either we're dealing with two very different depraved or from what you're describing, if it is the same and it has followed you home, it has grown in size rapidly because I don't believe a four five foot creature can claw out of a mouth. I mean, it was a little like spiky, but I wouldn't like say it was like, I mean, and maybe, maybe the spikes are more prominent when it's younger. But also, I guess if it was any like discernible size, that would be enough to. Yeah, never mind. We were buying the spikies. That's absolutely Ew. disgusting. <laughs> so, we know that someone came during the party, assuming that the the room was empty, when. My, my mama and Arthas were in the room study. Sometime during the event, someone came in and either the murder took place or a ritual occurred. And then hours later, another depraved or the same but of shape difference attacked Renshaw just down the street. I mean, Decent two synopsis. depraved on one street, it it has to be the same one. Uh, yeah, I mean, Oriana, uh, from what is knowledge to us and even what is knowledge to the newspaper and perhaps carefully curated to go to the public John correct me if I'm wrong but the depraved they are they are a conflict within the Veramore woods yes the city is safe this the our walls the Rangers and the ashen order are meant to protect us yeah absolutely um, yeah all the depraved that you have ever heard of come from the deepest part of the forest and even in the accounts from hundreds of years ago the the stories that they tell you would know particularly because Renshaw's family was in charge of Ethra's Grove which is a town deep in the forest that <clears throat> they were overrun by depraved coming from the deepest parts of the forest they don't come from anywhere else Except and, that and this one stomach. was born unless in unless scene. it could be summoned or brought from the woods and yeah or or born created here so my question too is why my attic and why your study like the true through brick and like mortar to get inside of my attic takes time and dedication for a creature that was no more than a few hours old I'm not sure what it was trying to attain why are we assuming that this creature was born in a, a fledgling Be because the enforcer said that uh, a creature had cl clawed out of the mouth yes okay of but the it, lady, and he he suspected uh -huh. a depraved because of the goo and the gore yeah. that had followed the trail oh, out yes. the window. And there was goo. There was goo too. The same goo. Well, Renshaw. Yeah. What is in the attic? Yeah. Because just old stuff. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Renshaw, you would know that first off the goo because you touched, you found both goo. Um, technically, the goo found you the second time, but the <laughs> you the goo is definitely identical. You also know 
assuming that that depraved was in the attic the whole time, right? Because you didn't hear it scratch through or, or come in. Like, it it could have jumped you at any point. And you were in there for a little bit, sifting through all that stuff. And the only time it jumped down was after you pulled out the cloak in, in the sphere. Not that you have to tell them that, what? but you would know that you were in there for, it wasn't like a quick couple minutes, like you were in there for probably like 10, 15 minutes going through the books, going through, finding the, the false bottom, like before it jumped down. Whatever is at work here, I can only assume that the, the witches must have planned this. The vault that we found behind the painting my mama had no knowledge of its existence. I I know her tells. She was speaking truthfully when she said that she didn't know what was behind that. And I as well have studied my family's history as part of my count training. There was no... It was simply a, a painting, a d piece of decor that has existed in our manner that is as old as the city itself what about your father were you able to ask him if he knew about the safe at all maybe he had some other dealings that i know florian doesn't always discuss with kier and maybe he has his own that he doesn't discuss with her i could perhaps but i mean he's not from house blackspane even he's from the south of calador i don't know if if he would know of it, it would have to have been something that had been installed within the past mm -hmm. time that he's been staying here. I can, I can ask. Do you know if your grandmother and my grandsire had any relations? Well, I mean, my, my grandmother would have lived likely, not, I don't, I'm not quite so certain on her, all of her ages, but before the depraved, before the betrayal of the witches and live, I mean, our summer home was in Ethos Grove, our countryside estate. I'm, sure they were close. Eleanor, you would know so much to say that your grandmother would, even after the betrayal of the witches, would still visit Ethra's Grove. Not nearly as frequently, but they were on yeah. such good terms with the Tyrvalds, and she in particular was so close to um, Renishore's grandsire that she would still make trips out there even after like, even, you know, when the attacks went Yeah, bad. when the woods became dangerous. Yeah. She, you... Yeah. You would know that she isn't necessarily the last person, but even after, like, Ren... Arthas moved into the city and Alent, the, the grandsire, refused to move, she was probably one of the last people to go out and visit Ethra's Grove before it was, like, completely destroyed. Not that she was the last person there. Like... The grandsire was absolutely mm. the last person there. But she probably saw the grandsire more recently than his children did before his passing. Or his murder. Whatever got to him first. Mm -hmm. I mean, they secured a house for the Tyrvalls yeah, in the city when the when when a state was being bought up as all of the viscounts from the woods moved in i mean the city became overloaded and um, might i say your estate well not as grand as ours is nothing like what the atwoods live in right right 
Not Atwoods. Adairs. 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 Adairs living. <laughs> I knew exactly what you meant. Like, well, she's going right <laughs> for Denise. Bitch, Denise. I'm making it canon that her house is not as I nice. Love, what, a, what a good bit of like improv. Like, yes, and you're like, and Denise's house sucks. Not like, and you can't do anything about that. This house fucking sucks. <laughs> That's funny. Well, we'll play it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the painting in front of the safe was from my grandsire, but the painting could have been there before the safe or after the safe. It really doesn't, it's not tied to the safe in any... And the painting wasn't accurate, right? To like what the tributary currently looks the like? The painting was accurate to the tributary before its renovations. And so you, you yes. know that the painting is older than I have a year. Yeah, I think I have one too. Yeah. Uh, sixteen twenty-three. Yeah, so you know the painting is older than sixteen twenty-three. Which is, is that before? If the betrayal of the mages is like fifty years. Yeah, the betrayal of the mages happened. I think it's like sixteen thirteen, sixteen eleven, like right around then. Oh, okay. I, in sixteen twenty-three, like the year it was renovated, Grandsire mm -hmm. would have been dead. He yeah, would not yeah, he was dead by then. Um. Yeah. But it, it was done sometime before that. I mean, the woods, the Veramore woods, are awfully close to the witch's homeland. Do you think that perhaps a witch is seeking items that our families might have owned or hunting us? I mean, they're evil. Oh, you think... Oh, like, perhaps my grandsire and your grandmother stole something from the witches, and they're trying to get it back. Now. I don't even think... 50-something years later. Stole from them? I just think... It, I mean, it makes sense. They'd stolen something from the Quillins. They were hiding out in Renshaw's attic. Perhaps we just had something they wanted. It's just, the timing feels weird. But it does make sense. I don't actually know if anything left the attic. We don't keep very good inventory on all the junk up there. Well, we know something left the study. Yeah. And it was something that had been untouched for quite a long time for the dust build up. And I mean, while perhaps Kira was involved, I feel like more likely something resided within the manor for a hundred years, unknowingly to my family. And uh, Enforcer Dayborn also mentioned that he was able to detect that the item that was stolen was of a magical artifact. It did have, a magical residue left within the safe and so it wasn't just any item it was something of of quite importance probably of importance to the witches yeah i mean we are good people we have my i've never heard of my parents speak of ma i mean we have no holy magic we have nothing of that sort this, whatever this is, this is old. That's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, an unknown magical object in the Quillen Manor. Monster pops up. Monster then goes to Tyrvold's Manor. Renshaw, you should keep an eye out for hidden magical objects. I mean, yeah, I do have a trunk that used to belong to my grandsire. I'll 
take a look in it. I mean, I imagine it's just ledgers and books of that sort. Oriana, I know you just mentioned you had kind of run through what had happened. In doing that, <clears throat> you remember you got that note from the Lucille Splotchin's hand. Yes, um, I did write a note here that after the session ended, I was going to ask you, you said you would give me a hard copy of that note, and I did not yes, receive it. Yes, uh, <laughs> So I was going to ask you yeah, if yeah. I could have that for the next episode just to review. Yeah. And as you say that, that clicks, and I'll read the note again, and I'll send it over to you right away. But it says, uh, it was in Lucille's possession, and it said, yeah. Once you acquire the Carnius Grim, you are to leave immediately. It is essential if we are to bring about Cinderfall. We will gather again on the 1st of Asha, which is in nine days, eight days now, uh, and Thalia will be born anew. And then almost where a signature would be, it says Vestra Onus. Gotcha. And I will send that. Do I know what Lucille looked like? Is there a chance like that I'd have any suspicions that she might have been a witch? Yeah. You would know. Give me a give me a gossip check. Also while you're doing that, I just want to be clear that yeah. Oriana read that note out loud in the room so any information that john just said like you two both know too yeah i think yeah. eleanor has a a sketching of like the words right now yeah um that's a 17. 17. you would know that she is not of moorish moorish ancestry um but you also know that she worked a lot with um, she, she was in no way, she wasn't quite a peasant, but she was in no way well off. And so she interacted, mm -hmm. as a journalist, she interacted with a lot of people in the city. Uh, and so her, she herself was not of Moorish ancestry, but she very well could be working with or for somebody. Yeah. It just seems or, like mean, the note. So, yeah, sorry. No, no, no. I was say, yeah, no, you can keep giving me theories, I, yeah, you know. I mean, she could be wearing, with her for somebody. Also, like, she ended up dead. So there's a lot of legends of, like, witches possessing people or puppeting people and making them do stuff. And, like, yeah. uh, not puppet, uh, charming, like, you know, enchanting people to do things. So, um, granted, the letter in her hand kind of means, makes it sound like she went into here premeditatively. But, like it was a message. Yeah. I mean, perhaps whether she, a, a journalist, she got into the wrong crowd. If she was somehow enchanted by a witch, she could have been sent in with the depraved. Insider, I I need to question my guards to see if they saw her enter. I, perhaps Oriana, that would actually be something now that it's a murder, once the body is properly identified. Yeah. I... I wonder if there's anywhere we could go to look up that Carnus Grimm. See if there's any information on that. I mean, I imagine it's some kind of magical artifact. Snooping might raise eyebrows, but... For us, at least. Yeah. I mean, we can visit the Temple of Rion. I know they curate some magical artifacts, magical books in particular. Maybe they would have some more knowledge on, on something similar to that. Yeah. As far as it, for book learning in the city, um, the Temple of Rion or the Guiding Flame Institute 
are going to be good sources for learning about magic. Learning about history is mostly going to come through the Librum Sophos, the, the public library, and then anything to do with um, either Kalidor, but more likely the world of Ethereum, like big picture stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you'll get from the Trove, which is a bookstore. Like you have to go buy books from, from out of town. You can find some of it in all the different places, but for the most part, those are their specialties. Then let's uh, go to the uh, Ryan Institute tomorrow, perhaps? Well, we need to, Renshaw, you and I in particular need to make sure we are distancing ourselves from anything that is related to the occultists until the investigation is complete. I, I mean, you are clear at the moment, more so than I. So perhaps you and Oriana could go, but I do not wish to raise unwarranted suspicion. Are either of you attending the ceremony of bells? That is tomorrow morning, yeah. Okay, I will not be in attendance for that, no. I guess, I honestly, I wasn't aware, but I would imagine <laughs> that. You can check with your servants. <laughs> I imagine I'm going, I, I really don't know. Yeah, you, you would be expected to go. We should all take measures to stay safe. Yes, post extra guards. I'm sure the barracks are actually probably one of the safest places to be. Yes, the, the barracks probably are the safest place to be right now at the moment. Um, do you guys feel safe going back home? Whatever they want to find, I think, for now. At least from my from the study, I don't know. I believe they've already found yours. Well, Renshaw, do make sure that you check the trunks and the attic to see if anything was left behind and sleep in a room far from it. Yeah. I I mean he the the depraved no. He left. It's I I venture he got what he was looking for from my place as well. Which is probably a problem. We should probably be worried about that. But well, there's only so much to do with so little information. Is he at the ceremony of the bells? <laughs> you at the ceremony of bells. As dinner concludes, and three of you have these leads and plans, uh, all of you for your hard work in investigating or covering up a murder or surviving an attack. Uh, See how you're the bad person? No! You covered up a murder. I don't fucking care. I protected our That's names. True. From from investigating a murder, upholding your, uh, your countship and uh, surviving a d attack from the depraved, all three of you level up. And a woo, woo, woo. big level two. First time. Yes. Yeah. Let's increase that I was that just going to say, get some, of the, get some extra yeah. good points in there. Um, now I won't be one hitting me next time. There you go. I'll just have to make the Dupree stronger next time. Oh. That's all. <laughs> I guess they get to level up too. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. But with, with that, we will end tonight's session of City of Shadows. Uh, if you enjoyed the intrigue and us getting into the nitty-gritty of the murder and the secrets that are within the city make sure you like and subscribe for future episodes until we meet again over another round at the four rings in we'll see you at the ceremony Woo!